You're listening to The Sizzle on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron Skillet Television. That's what you're drinking, my friend. That is ridiculous. That is, yeah, that should be outlawed in so many countries. <laughs> but you know what it is. You know who it is. It's The Sizzle here, and we're getting ready to talk some fantasy football. Now, if you missed our first Sizzle draft, shame on you. But tonight, we're having another Sizzle draft. We're giving people the opportunity to play with The Sizzle. Come in and enjoy yourself and learn some things about how you play and oh. how a team Whoa. is set up. <laughs> I can't. Hold on there now. All right with him. This guy, <laughs> this guy here. You know who he what is. There? He's Jay Sizzle. Sean Sizzle. I'm, J- <laughs> I'm Jay Sizzle. Sizzle. And all it's I Sean can Sizzle. say is, if you have not liked, subscribed, and shared, make sure that you hit that button. Make sure that you're getting a notification for all of the new content that we bring out daily for your entertainment. Make sure that you're also leaving comments below. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you feel. We want to hear from you. But the thing we want to tell you is that fantasy is here. Fantasy. And this season on The Sizzle, on Iron Skillet Radio yeah. and Iron Skillet Television. On Iron Skillet, you're going to hear a lot of fantasy talk. You're going to hear about the Sizzle Fantasy Football League as we talk about it, what goes on. You're going to hear from Rich Sizzle. You're going to hear from Jay Sizzle as they start to tell you about what is the pickup for the game, what is fizzle, and what is sizzle for the week. If you're in a PPR league, if you're in a daily, whatever you're in, we give you all of the insights you need to know. So we're going to get started by telling you some things about fantasy as it's getting ready to move. We're just going to give some observations right now. Nothing in depth, nothing too deep. We're just going to talk a little fantasy. We talked a little strategy before. If you watched our pre-shows, then you know, if you listen to Rich Sizzle, how to set up a fantasy draft, how to go about making sure your team is strong. So, Jay, we had a draft. Again, I feel that the fantasy football gods are against me because somehow I got the sixth pick again. And let me tell you this, fantasy managers and those of you who are playing. If you can win your fantasy league from the 6th to the 12th or the 20th spot, if you're in a 10-game or a 10-person, 12, 14 even in a 20 player pool. If you can do that below there, obviously two things have happened. Number one, you've been blessed by the fantasy gods. And number two, you know what the hell you're doing. Because after that fifth pick, oh buddy, you got to make some reaches. You got to make some executive decisions. You got to reach for somebody maybe two rounds higher than you would have normally because you know how long it's going to be before you get back to that. Look, man, when you're 10 picks away, 18 picks away, yo, bro, I, I don't want to hear any of this mess about me. You should take a quarterback where his ADP falls and only take this specific player and this one. You take a running back here and then you take a wide receiver here. You take who you need for your team, buddy. Let me tell you something, bucko. You play around and, and not take the player you want. Play around and, and, and not take the quarterback you want. And then you're going to have Ben Roethlisberger as your starting quarterback. I'm just telling you, it happens like that. And I'm just a little... Hostile, a little perturbed. <laughs> by the fifth pick, you, you're picking maybe the fifth running back that's the best, but you better remember, like in our league, some sap sucker frog, the boy, who takes, who, who going to take Patrick Mahomes at the top of the second round? You just and then Why? you just mess Why? up everything else, man. Now I got to take Why? quarterbacks because I'm like, oh, bruh. Oh, 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 this is what they doing. Oh, okay, they doing it big, big up here, buddy. Now I got to reach in the bag of goodies, and now my starting wide receiver is is probably cut somewhere because only starting wide receivers I could get are injured or dead. That's all I could get. So with that tantrum, I'm just saying, Jay, when it comes to fantasy, man, this year, this year. Yeah. How do you win this, man? How do you win this game? Because, like, I saw what you and Rich Sizzle were doing, okay? We were live casting, okay? And nobody wanted to come live cast with G Sizzle because I was in the room and I was telling you some things about your life. I was like, yeah, that's a dumb pick. 
I said it. I said it. Maybe you didn't hear it, but I said it. <laughs> and so, I, I, how'd you like them fantasy picks I had there, sir? Were you the number three, number four? Yeah, don't 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 hate me because I'm beautiful. Okay. Hey, right, bro. Well, well. Okay. So, yeah, and yeah. I mean, really good. Uh, I took so, an attack this season, so yeah. Uh-oh. Just, just close your eyes and push buttons? Is that what it was? It's about, yeah. At that fifth pick, that's about all you can do. It's just like, yeah. The, yeah. Fifth, the fifth pick's horrible. I hate the fifth pick. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in fantasy, it's a, it's a long, extra long season this year, right? Mm -hmm. That extra game is going to make a big difference down the line here, especially guys getting nicked up toward the end of the year. Um, you're going to be a lot of guys stashing people this year, right? They're going to pick people up off the waiver wire and they're going to stash them, maybe not even to use them themselves, but to make sure you can't get them. Right. All right. Cause there's going to be, there's going to be more attrition this year. You had less preseason. So that means you got more people getting injured. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have more of a influx of new faces coming in, more people moving around especially um, when you have uh, toward the end of the trade season. So right now, I would tell a lot of people, don't overthink it this first week. It is what it is, unless you see a really good matchup. But if you see a really good matchup and they're sitting on your bench, that means you didn't draft too well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you, need, you need to have your top. Your, your top guy should be up and ready to go week one. Um, I don't see a lot of difference out here. The quarterback wise out here, Lamar Jackson is still going to be your number one guy. I think he's going to put up the most points against the Raiders because that team is trash. So if you have Lamar Jackson, you're going to be starting him anyway. So I'm not telling you anything. If you don't have Lamar Jackson, you're going to start your quarterback. Now, one of my leagues, I jumped a little early and I got Tom Brady. But you know why I went that? Because I just believe that those books are going to get stronger as the years go by, as the year go by, as the year goes by. And I think Tom Brady is going to know this team even better offensively, and I think they're going to get better. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I took Tom Brady, moved up. I took him a little bit earlier than I should have because I just think somewhere down the line he's going to put up big numbers when I need him at the end of the year, especially with an extra game. And I got people nicked up. So you have to think with some strategy on how you want to do some things. Really try to get uh, running backs against bad um, bad defenses. If you can do that, do that. If you have to move one of your running backs out there to grab somebody and he really hasn't been – and look, don't leave guys sitting on your bench that are not producing for you. Mm -hmm. All right? If they're, if they're playing like trash, Great if they're playing like trash, right, Move them and get somebody in there where you need some help, especially on your bye weeks. I guarantee you there's a number of people you got four of your players out on week seven, all right? Go look at your roster. You're going to have to shore that up. Start that before week six, all right? You need to get that covered by week three. Mm -hmm. So there won't be any big, you know, big, big, oh, I got I to gotta switch to four people, and you don't have them because that's when you go out and get obliterated and you lose by a tremendous amount. And then after that, if you're in some of these leagues where point differential matters, that could be your whole season right there. So get, get those things covered early. And uh, don't overthink week one because everybody's going to put their best team out there right from the beginning. Yeah, I like to keep out, you know, my thought is this. And tell me if this works, Jay. I like to have my first team set up wherein – it's not just plug and play. It's really, I can sit there, leave my first squad in and not have to worry about shuffling around because I'm feeling confident that my squad, that team that I've set out there, maybe outside of the my defense, that might be the only thing I can play with week to week. But I want to be clear yeah. and I want to be secure with my top. Who are my top receivers? Who are my top running back? Who's my flex out? Who's my quarterback? Now, with that said, that all can go to hell if your top quarterback gets hurt. If he goes down, yep. uh, you're screwed. You're screwed. 
And you're screwed royally because I hear people always talking about, well, if you pick this player, you're leaving this other. Anytime you pick anything, I mean, if it's a choice, there's something, there's a choice you made. There was a strategy. So, yes, if you pick Patrick Mahomes in the second round, and let's say there was a bona fide top tight end running back or receiver there yeah. that you bypass, then you just short. You and you knew that, like, okay, am I gonna take yeah. Allen Robinson or am I gonna jump up here and grab Patrick Mahomes? Because maybe after yeah, and that, I, and that you don't have anybody else as far as your receiving core. And, and that's the biggest problem is that you got guys who take these names up top mm -hmm. and quarterback is one of those things except for, you know, for the most part, you can wait on quarterbacks. But the mm -hmm. thing you can't really wait on is top flight running backs because right. It, right. It, after, you, after you get past number 10, it dips hurriedly. Mm -hmm. Your running back number two, you're reaching. I mean, I reached a little bit on my running back number two just because he had a good rookie year last year, and I end up getting him in two of my fantasy leagues, and that's the kid from um, from the football team yes. from uh, Washington. Yeah, Gibson so, is a good pick. Uh, and that that's kid, I think, good. Good. yeah, yeah. And I got him. I got him in two of my fantasy leagues. I just think he's a good pick. But as for that, as a, as a second running back, but as for that, um, you have to get guys in there who are going to produce from that running back position. Um, I know very few people have people like Christian McCaffrey, other people like that, but you got to start looking at offenses who get down on the goal line and give that ball to that one back. If you get guys like that who do that, those guys possibly have a chance to score. If you start seeing guys who cannot push the ball into the end zone, then you need to look at those running backs to go, hmm, maybe that guy's not going to get an opportunity to get many touches down around the goal line because these teams are stalling early and they're not getting the ball into the end zone, that's the running back you don't want on your team because he's not going to get the attempts to score the football. So, you you know, it's, it's just like I, I said earlier, it was that Cam Newton, nobody knew that he was your number one rushing guy for the last decade, mm -hmm. right? But who did the Carolina Panthers get the ball to? Well, they either gave it to Cam Newton or they gave it to Christian McCaffrey, right, on the goal line. Well, that's why you had two, there were two of the best fantasy scorers out there. Because of that, you need to find people like that. Even on bad teams, if you can find a guy who's getting the ball on the goal line, the team might be losing by two touchdowns, but that guy might have two touchdowns and have 85 yards for you. That's a good day for your fantasy. Yeah. So, look I, for I'm that time. As, you know, I'm looking at your team now, and I'm going to, I'm just going to put your team out just to give people an example of what your your team looks like. You have Justin Herbert okay. at your QB1. Uh, your, yep. your wide receiver one is A.J. Brown with uh, your wide receiver two being Mike Evans. Your running back one yes, is Ezekiel Elliott. Your running back two is Gibson from the Washington football team. Two, two. You know, Antonio two, Gibson two. should be pretty good. Your tight end is Mark Andrews. And then mm -hmm. as your flex player, you have Miles Sanders from Philadelphia. So you have a solid you have a solid up front line. I like it. Yep. Yep. Because I, I look from I know Zeke is going to produce, mm -hmm. especially if Dak goes down again this year. Right. We already know he had the shoulder. We already know he came off the horrific injury for the ankle. That's why I'm like, they're going to lean heavy on Zach. Zach's going to get the football. Unless he gets injured, Zach's getting the ball. All right? Then Gibson, I'm just taking a flyer on that kid. I'm like, hey, you produced last year? Come do it again for me because you were sitting there. I want to believe in you. Let's go. And the wide receivers are just solid. They're solid. They're going to get the ball. That's who, that's who they go to. And now at this point, your flex guy, you're just going to who is going to give you touches. Mm -hmm. Right, you want a guy who's going to get touches because that's the only way your flex guy is going to produce for you that he's touching the football. Mm -hmm. And we know that this guy touches the football on a regular basis, and that's the reason why I, you know set that up. I was very happy. I'm sorry, I'm very happy to have Zeke, and really happy to get Gibson. I mean, really happy about that. Mm -hmm. Super happy about getting Gibson. So hopefully this and this is a team. I'm not going to touch this. 
Right. I'm going to look at it in week two to see where we're at, but I probably won't touch it in week two right. unless there's somebody to move around for some reason. Mm -hmm. But I, I really don't start tweaking until about the third or fourth game. Mm -hmm. You know, um, then I'll start tweaking a little bit. You got to give, you got to, sometimes you can overthink a process and there's not enough out there until guys get desperate and they start losing and then they start putting people on the waiver wire. And that's when you start going out there trying to get people. And if you have somebody, you can trade for somebody. Right. Right. And uh, if you have a name, people trade for names. They don't necessarily trade for production. True. Very true. Very yeah. true. I'm looking at my team and I'm pretty proud of my team. It's not the greatest team, but in the sixth spot, you do what you have to do. I have at my QB one, I've got Josh Allen. Uh, my RB, my wide receiver one, I've got Amari Cooper, my wide receiver two, Adam Thielen. Running back one, Adam Jones. Mm -hmm. Running back two, Najee Harris. Tight end. Now, this is where it got a little spicy for me. I reached out and I got Rob Gronkowski. We'll talk about that in a second. And as yeah. my flex, I got Chase Edmonds from Arizona. So when you're looking at your team, especially you're down low, and by the time we were doing a lot of picking, um, you don't have a chance to get a Mark Andrews when you're low because you're trying to position yourself to at least solidify some things. Hopefully this year with Amari Cooper, if you did the research on him the past two years, he has had the lion's share of the catches there. Everybody says, well, hey, he's not the best receiver. He's not the best receiving name, but he's had the best production. Was he injured? Yeah. Yes, he was. Again, the same thing with Adam Thielen. You, you get a quality. He's a boomer bust player where one week, either he gave you nothing or... That week he gave you three touchdowns and 87 yards. It's something ridiculous always with Adam Thielen. And being that in the division he's in, he gets a lot of opportunities to go against weaker secondaries. Not as good coverage, especially when you talk about their nickel coverage. Not as great. So I feel good about that. The question that was asked was, why Rob Gronkowski? And it goes back to Jay's point. When you look at a Tom Brady, you know that on the goal line, there are only four other players in the league who have had better goal line stances than Rob Gronkowski. And that's because two of them, well, one being the quarterback I have, just rushed himself. He just took it in himself. But Rob yep. Gronkowski is one of the targets that Tom Brady's comfortable with looking to. He goes to him. I know they're getting back players. I know they've got Brait there, and I know they're getting OJ back. But who has he been throwing balls to for years? No pun intended. It's been Rob Gronkowski. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, and I can see why you get a Rob Gronkowski, and, and we all get to look down the line here and see how Rob is doing health-wise. Um, how are they using him? It might be a situation where, hey, you know, I might pick up somebody else, stash Rob. Uh, right now for when you need him. When you know, hey, you know, this is a, a Tom Brady type of game and they're going to and they get down toward the goal line and they're going to start inserting Rob Gronkowski in there mm -hmm. and he's almost unstoppable down there when he's healthy. So this is, you have to think like this, especially down in an elongated season. There's going to be a lot more injuries. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be difficult. If you're not a guy who's a really a stat guy or a guy who's really looking um, how to fix your fantasy team, you could do your fantasy team a lot more harm than good if you're just willy-nilly moving people around. So if you are one of those people who are going to do a lot of trading, a lot of moving around, to make sure you're using some form of a service that gives you an idea of what you need to be doing with the roster that you have. Because uh, there's a lot of people out here who are just playing for a good time, and it's not going to be fun when you don't have opportunity because you're done in your fantasy league by week eight. Week eight. Yeah. yeah. And kudos to those. And I have to always say it. Allen Robinson is that, that tip I would give to you. You know he's wide receiver one. You know mm -hmm. whoever's under center for the Chicago Bears, they've got to throw to Allen Robinson. 
So maybe he's not the guy, but he was still a thousand yard receiver last year. Still put up some touchdowns yeah. for you. You're looking for people, as you said, Jay, you're looking for repetition. You're looking for consistency. How many times stacked, stacked? How many times did they get the ball, especially running backs, especially on goal line? Is this the person that punches it in? Is this the guy that when they get on the goal line, they're giving him the ball? No matter what. Yeah. If they got to pass it to him, if they got to throw it to him, if they got to come up with a scheme, if he's got to do a sneak play or a wildcat, he's going in. That's your key. So you know now what you look for as far as fantasy is concerned. And you know what we're going to do. We're going to keep yep. telling you about players throughout the season. Even if we're going to look at players like, hey, I probably need to put this person on my team. And as Jay said, I know, don't right? be afraid to let somebody go. If you got a player there, don't try and hold on for tomorrow's glory when today you're in shame and disaster. So I like it. Wow, that, that, that's quote of the week right there. That is quotable. I like it. That's a hip-hop <laughs> quotable, my friend. So you know who it is. You know what it is. It's the sizzle here in the building. And make sure that you hit the like, subscribe button. Make sure that you're passing this information along. And tell us what you think down in the comments. Who are your picks to click? Who is all fizzle or all sizzle on your fantasy team? And that way, we've heard from you. You've heard from us. So now we're good. You know what we come to do. Come to give you the hottest information in the building. He's Jay Sizzle. I'm G Sizzle. And we will see you, my friend, on the other side. Make sure that you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Iron Skillet Sports. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to Iron Skillet Sports on YouTube at Iron Skillet Sports.